So let's get into the cold plunge. Yeah. How does that manifest with you? Yeah. Do you do cold ex- deliberate cold exposure? I do either the ocean, which I did this morning, which is not uh, technically that cold. It's well for the lay person, yeah, it is. It feels cold to me. Sixty two cool. degrees or something. I do the ocean, or I do a a cold tank. Great. Uh, Great. Away from the ocean, and then I do my swimming pool as long as it's cold. Once it gets warm, I move to the tank. Great. Well, uh, deliberate cold exposure can come in a d- couple of different forms. One is to get into the ocean. The other is to get into an ice bath. The other is to get into one of these commercially available circulating cold baths up to the neck. The other is to take a cold shower. And everything I'm s- about to say pertains to all of those uh, ways of doing it. You can also go outside when it's really cold in a minimum of clothing, provided it's appropriate amounts of clothing, I suppose. That's not as effective because the amount of heat that's transferred from your body outwards is four times it- what it is in the air when you're in water. The the Michael Phelps example is a really good one. The reason Michael Phelps could eat 12,000 calories a day is not because he was burning 12,000 calories a day from movement. It's because he was doing that movement in water and the heat transfer is so much greater. And when you go swimming and you get out, the reason you're really hungry is because you burned a ton of calories. Oh, interesting. So for those of you that are actually trying to burn a lot of calories, do your, do your exercise in water, Mm -hmm. even warm water. And the heat transfer is much greater. This is not often discussed. Okay. Some positive effects of deliberate cold exposure. I'll just start with what you need in order to get these effects. It depends on how cold it is. So everyone's going to say how cold. It should be uncomfortably cold such that your mind is going, I really want to get out, but I can stay in safely, right? Because if somebody runs out there and jumps in 35 degree ice water right now, you can have a heart attack and die. You're not, that's not going to happen at 60 degrees unless you're, you have a heart issue to begin with. So the point is it should feel uncomfortable. You're, you should feel some stress. That stress is the consequence of a molecule called adrenaline, also called epinephrine. Same thing. Don't ask me why they named it the same thing. Scientists like to confuse each other and everybody else, but epinephrine, adrenaline, same thing. When you get into cold water and it's uncomfortable and you have to slow your breathing down, a couple of positive things happen. First of all, adrenaline release is the common generic signature of stress. You are deliberately putting yourself into stress. If you can learn to calm your mind a bit and relax, or at least make it through that, you are becoming more resilient you're becoming grittier. You know, we hear about grit, resilience, and mental toughness. We have examples of, you know, David Goggins and these people, but you are learning to manage your thinking under conditions of high adrenaline. So the next time someone cuts in front of you or your partner says something really triggering, you will maintain clearer thinking and clearer mode of action, which is absolutely adaptive. So it's great for resilience training. The second thing is that it increases your metabolism, not just while you're in the deliberate cold, but for many, many hours, maybe even days afterwards. And here's the reason, you have fat of the blubbery sort that's called white fat because it's white under the microscope. And then you have beige fat and brown fat, which is dense with mitochondria, which are the energy factories within cells. Deliberate cold exposure that's uncomfortable stimulates more brown fat, which is kind of like the oil in a candle. And it does two really important things. It makes you more comfortable at cold temperatures. So if you're somebody who's always feeling cold, mm. you, are, you need to crank up your brown fat stores. And this is not blubbery fat. It will help burn off the white fat stores. And then the, the third and kind of final thing is the reduction in inflammation. You know, inflammation, inflammation, we hear all the time. It's bad uh-huh. for your brain. It's bad for your body. A couple of, uh, it reduces inflammation. So Basically, what you want to do is get into uncomfortably cold water that is safe for you to stay in for a total of 11 minutes per week. That's what the research says. I'm drawing from peer-reviewed studies. I'm glad now. you said per week. No, per I week. I'm like, I do three per minutes. Week. So that could day. be, you know, one minute one day, two minutes another day, et cetera. Oh, it could be four minutes, three, et cetera. Interesting. There's an accumulated number. That's right. So that's the threshold to build up these brown fat stores that will increase your metabolism. So 11 minutes a week. Uh, like, you Mi- don't need, minimum. Yeah, yeah minimum. minimum. You don't need an, an ocean or a pool. You, you can do this in a shower. That's right. I, I go on the road. I stay in a hotel. I do it in the shower. I don't stay in there for 10 minutes. I just, but I've been in Boston in January and just sat in there and just put fuck it and put it on cold. <laughs> It'll it, wake oh, you up. It it's, uh, hits a lot harder than the ocean does. And it hits harder than the pool. And the, even the tank, there's something about it, the, the freezing spray. water just yeah. spraying all over your, yeah. yourself. But you can, you can do it. 
it, it's doable. Now, I, everyone's, I've tried to talk everyone and their brother into doing this stuff. And the uh, number one answer is it's cold. Uh-huh. Right? It's just like, I, yes, I know, shithead. We agree. I'm not saying we're going there and enjoying ourselves. I'm saying this is the point. Because my, my mom loves little kids. She goes, oh, hi, he's so cute. Look at the hair. He had blonde hair. Uh-huh. Blonde hair, oh, so cute. And then he turned around, pulled his eyes back, went, oh, 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 oh. Oh, boy. And, I, and I've never seen anything like that. You know what I mean? I didn't know what that is. You live on the military base. You don't see that because we're all mixed up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, and I just remember looking at my mom. 